Project Veritas is a right-wing dis disinformation group who clearly has no credibility at all. And James O'Keefe is one of those guerrilla journalists, quote-unquote journalists, who who thinks he can, like, so solve some stupid crime that doesn't actually happen. Like, uh, for example, voter fraud, which, as you can see here, clearly, there is voter fraud. At least what that's what James thinks that is. But I certainly don't think that there is any voter fraud at all. And this is one of those reasons why I am going to talk about this. So let's read this story from Vice News. Male voting fraud whistleblower admits Project Veritas wrote his habitat. Richard Hopkins, a Pennsylvania postal worker, is not standing by his previous claims. Alright. So, let's uh, read this. Richard Hopkins, the eerie postal worker who accused his supervisors of tampering with ballots in a sworn habitat then recanted, then recanted his recantation, admitted to Postal Service investigators that the right-wing disinformation group Pachuveritas wrote the sworn evidence he signed, which was then provided to the Trump campaign. Pachuveritas posted two-plus hours of recorded audio of the interview between Hopkins and two investigators from the USPS Inspector General's office uh, to YouTube on Wednesday after previously posting decisively edited clips for training investigators as imitating Hopkins. Another portion of the interview was not recorded according to the Washington Post which first reported news. And that's just kind of crazy, really. People that <laughs> be looking at whatnot. Your, your letter carrier, tell me what your boss told you on November 9th. Why did Walter Lee instruct postal workers to discard Trump and Republican mail as well? I'm not sure if that came from higher up. Did Walter Lee tell you to keep delivering Biden mail? What happens to the undeliverable bulk business mail? Um, I believe it goes back to the plan, but you mean uh, undeliverable bulk business mail is, it, it's actually, it's a step away from the product. Do you think that the United States Postal Service should be playing politics? No, I think that we're a delivery service in this time and that place. That seems to be that once uh, they decided that uh, there was a victory in the election, they were like, well, we're not, we're not doing it. Would there have been anybody else that would have overheard this? Election, they were like, well, we're not, we're not doing it. 
Would there have been anybody else that would have overheard this, possibly? That was Monday of this week. And how many people work in, and how many people are we talking about who overheard this? If required, would you be willing to, if it came to it, would you testify under oath that this information is true? Yeah, it takes a lot of courage to come forward like this in the way that you're doing it. What compelled you to do that? had previously claimed that he heard supervisors talking about illegally back dating mail in about to November 3rd so they would be accepted and counted. The eerie postmaster denied and in a Facebook post over the weekend in a recording of a Monday meeting, investigators asked Coppin Hopkins if he stood by his claims that his supervisors were back dating belt. At this point he asked no. Hopkins' story has healed conspiracy theories about mail-in voting in Pennsylvania. The state accepted mail-in ballots through number 6 through ballots received after election date were segregated pending further legal action. Officials were not allowed to begin counting mail-in ballots until last Tuesday, created in the mirage of a huge early Trump lead due to the divide between in-person voters and people who voted by mail, like myself. President-elect Joe Biden won the state and currently holds a lead of more than 50 million votes. 50,000 votes. Secretary of the Commonwealth, Kathy Rothnar said earlier this week, that just 10,000 of the state's mail-in ballots arrived after November, November 3rd, and they were too small to affect the outcome race. After the election day, the Erie County Board of Elections received 129 mail-in ballots that were postmarked November 3rd, but just two of the ballots were processed through the Erie Postal Facility, according to an L analysis by the Erie Times News. Even though Hopkins recanted President Donald Trump as this is it, his original story was accurate. During the interview, federal agents, agents reminded Hopkins, who described himself as a libertarian who voted for Trump, but someone who ultimately didn't care who won the election and just wanted it done right, that his cooperation with their investigation was voluntary, and asked if he had a personal attorney, Hopkins said he did not, but Ned Bertus had one on retainer in case there's anything that happens. I just need to make sure of that because you did have a lawyer. I would make whatever efforts possible to have that person here, one agent says. When pressed for specifics about what he heard about supposedly backdated ballots, Hopkins could only say what I assume I overheard was two supervisors talking about a ballot that was postmarked on November 4th and that they walked away when they saw him. Hopkins also said the evidence was written up by Curtis's lawyers and backed away from the statements in it, saying it was a lot of lawyering. He added that it was, he was in so much shock that I wasn't paying much attention to what Hodge Durantos was were telling me. In a statement emailed to the Post, Hodge Durantos says the evidat was drafted with this Falcon's input requested visions.
After Democrats on House Oversight Committee said Tuesday that Hopkins recanted his had recanted his allegations, Hopkins disputed in a Wednesday interview with Project Veritas that he has done so. I'm kind of pissed, he told Project Veritas founder James O'Keefe. I feel like I just got played. They, they were grilling the hell out of me. How, how are you feeling right now? I'm kind of pissed. I feel like I just got played. And so let me, let me make good on that promise right away, okay? This storm is getting crazy, right? And it's just out of a lot of people's control. And so the reason they called me in is to try to harness that storm, try to reel it back in before it gets really crazy. Okay? Understand? Because we have senators involved, we have the Department of Justice involved, we have all um, lawyer teams gotten a hold of me. I, I, I'm not, well, I am. I am trying to twist you a little bit because in that, believe it or not, your mind will kick in. Okay. Um, we like to control our mind, and when we do that, we can convince ourselves of a memory. But when you're under a little bit of stress, which is what I'm doing to you purposely, um, your mind can be a little bit clearer. And we're going to do a different exercise to make your mind a little bit clearer. Okay. Go. So, but this is all on purpose. Roger. I'm not scaring you, but I am scaring you. Tell y'all, I'd rather be out back in Afghanistan getting shot at by Afghans, um, it's the God, than, you know, having to be in this kind of position. I was in Afghanistan and Iraq. Two tours in, in the, while I was in the Marines, I was a Marine in five, for five years. And uh, after I got out of the Marines, I, I missed the uniform, so I went back into the Army Guard. I, I'd rather be serving my country and doing something that I feel like is historical, but at the same time, it's not my name that's going to be there. So the Marine Corps birthday, November 10th, is today. That's yeah. the date of the letter where they suspended you without pay. Yes. And tomorrow is Veterans Day. Yeah. And there's a lot of veterans watching this who served overseas. And there's a lot of people who call, are calling you a hero. If you could just sort of speak to the issue of, I mean, you're, you seem like a very normal guy who never asked for any of this. And you're a veteran. And a lot of people are calling you a hero for blowing the whistle on like, something very serious. And you're being retaliated by your own government. Could you just speak to these issues on Veterans Day, November the 11th? Robinson's Abida has been cited in a federal lawsuit filed by the Trump campaign in Pennsylvania, and, and Attorney General Barr, Bill Barr, cited his allegation in a memo to prosecutors authorizing them to investigate voting irregularities before the results of the election were certified, a reversal of the long-standing president investigation. The GoFundMe set up for him, which collected more than $136,000, was shut down by the Crunk Monday site earlier this week. And then Timothy Berg tweeted this out. The story of the Washington Post that Ned says Post Worker admits fabricate allegations about tempering. And he then tweeted, GoFundMe is not here for scammers. So that pretty much checks out the Project Gertas' his, uh, fake story about voter fraud that they're trying to create, obviously. So this is a reporter, Washington Post reporter, Jacob Bogage on Anderson Cooper talking about the interrogation of our USPS whistleblower. 
what we're able to report is that uh, the inspector general's agents had uh, a long time, well, first interviewed him on Friday in Erie, Pennsylvania, had another very long three hour interview with him on Monday, at the end of which uh, he made sworn statements recanting uh, the allegations he made. Or speaking with sources today, you know, the kind of words they, they use for me to describe that conversation was uh, overly embellished or totally made up. So where is this information coming from? Because we have a, we have audio, we have audio of this conversation, some of which we released, all of which we're releasing tomorrow, the raw, the raw. So why are these federal agents talking to the Washington Post and not giving this USPS whistleblower the thing that he supposedly signed that would then they pressured him for four hours. But he completely walked back the idea. James, you clearly made him sign sign some contract, which is which is why. The guy who got who got let go or fired backtracked his statement because at the end of the day there is no border fraud. The idea that uh, he overheard uh, his postmaster or other supervisors talking about manipulating ballots in a certain way. I should mention Mr. Hopkins this evening. Uh, with Project Veritas, a a right-wing group that has uh, tried to run sting operations uh, against credible journalists uh, and catch them in in errors. Credible journalists. We have evidence. We have recordings of what the federal agents say. Your evidence, quote-unquote evidence, doesn't add up to anything. You have no recordings. You have no evidence, Mr. Oda. Because there's no evidence of voter fraud, that is why he doesn't have evidence of that. You are creating evidence that is fake. Uh, you have nothing. You have no documents. You have no evidence. You have no signed documents. We do have a signed affidavit. We do. And you claim yourself as a, as a credible journalist. Well, you're not. You have the federal agents recording on tape saying that we're trying to, quote, scare you and, quote, twist you a little bit, you have nothing but your credibility. Project Veritas is... Project Veritas's credibility has been down in dumps for years. Especially recently, when I just made a video about this, which you can check it out now. Because... Of all people... You claim you have evidence of everything, but you don't. Us has never lost a lawsuit. You've settled lawsuits, many lawsuits, many times. Uh, has put out a video where Mr. Hopkins denies denying the allegations. Uh, but he, we also know through through credible sources. Credible sources. Uh, he did the exact opposite. Okay, but we haven't seen any documents, we haven't seen any audio, and we do have Richard now on tape again doubling down. So when you say credible sources, who are these sources? Are they sock puppets? And tell me again, why should I presume credibility of a source inside the federal government, which would leak to you, but not under the law required by law, give the document that this man supposedly signed to the man who signed it? Why are they presumed prima facie credible? Why are we supposed to believe your sources and not our own lying eyes, Richard, on the video doubling down, losing his job because he believes in what he saw and he's willing to risk his life and his job. He's a Marine, he's a veteran, he has a family, and he's out on a limb. And we're supposed to believe your credible sources. We can't see them, we can't hear them. We know nothing, except we're supposed to believe what you tell us. I don't believe it for a second. And James, we don't believe you.
you're not a credible journalist. I mean, come on. This is why Twitter has disputed this claim because the there is no election fraud and you created a false narrative to get clout or get famous. That is why you're not verified on Twitter. And I don't think you deserve that verification check mark anyway. Because you are not a credible journalist. You can keep posting the same videos for like the next couple of weeks or so. It doesn't mean that you're right. And it doesn't mean that you have proof. Because you don't. And the reason GoFundMe moved is for that exact reason. You can't fake a story that hasn't happened yet. This is why I prefer to listen to the actual news media. The news media knows when something is fake and the story that you're giving out is a fake excuse to claim that voter fraud is real when in fact, when in fact it is not real. Voter fraud doesn't really exist at all. So therefore, there is no voter fraud. Joe Biden is our president now. So there is no actual voter fraud. Christopher Gosmith tweeted the false Hunter Veritas video and countless article, mean spin-offs, and echo its narrative were viewed by millions of people and courting trust in our democ democratic process and the results of the election. Social media companies should push on occasions to correct plus the platform. Video not false, James McKee says. You SPS official stands by original his original habitat. We have tapes of bad agents who put pressure on him to sign something he didn't understand. They wouldn't let him leave. He's doubling down. You're trying to get us deplatformed. You're losing. Chris Goldsmith, 85. Actually, James O'Keefe. Chris Goldsmith is right. The video is false, and you know that. You've been fact checked by Twitter many, many times, and pretty soon by January 2020th. January 20th, 2021. Your account might ever be suspended or blocked so that you have to delete a few of tweets you made that are, are legitimately false information. You can keep tweeting that there's fraud, fraud all you want, but there is not whatsoever. You can keep showing us videos like this, but there is no voter fraud. You have no credibility as a journalist. You are just a grifter. That's what you are, a grifter. Describing backdating a ballot from November the 4th to the 3rd 
Well, Project Veritas has obtained recordings of federal agents interrogating him. We obtained these recordings, some which are explosive, in Pennsylvania, a state the Trump campaign is challenging the vote count on. Uh, this is very newsworthy information. We have whistleblowers about to go public. We are going to release these explosive recordings of the federal interrogation that is happening regarding this backdate gate. Stay tuned. We're going to release that, some of which tonight, more tomorrow. Other whistleblowers in the Postal Service, we urge you to come forward. We think that you should come forward, like Richard Hopkins did. Veritas tips at protonmail.com. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. James O'Keefe, Project Veritas. Huge update in this case. And yet, we proven that now you have no legitimate proof of voter fraud. You had we any of legitimate proof of voter fraud. The best thing you could have done, you pick what you pick the fool, is to actually present it. But in this case, every news media outlet that just reported that there is no voter fraud is telling a much bad, bigger truth than you are. So why should we believe you because you're part of a right-wing agenda and as an and as a democratic voter, voter I do not believe anything that you say what you say is beyond truthful. It is never truthful at all. You have no evidence whatsoever. You can't just say that there is that, that there is voter fraud when we all know that there's not. You can keep proving that to the American people, but the American people are not going to believe you because you're a laughing stock. You and the company Project Veritas is a laughing stock. At the end of the day, it's best that you, like, stop posting conspiracy theory videos like this and do yourself a favor and do many other people a favor as well and shut down Project Veritas and retire Project Veritas retire from from operating Project Veritas as well as shutting down because you have no credibility left in you. Joe Biden won fair and swear. He had 290 votes. Just like last time when Donald Trump had 306. Now Joe Biden has 290. And if you can't accept that, and if you are going to continue on spreading false information about voter fraud, then clearly you're about to get a rude awakening, James. I'm serious. You're going to get a very, very, very rude awakening. So I would advise you and Project Veritas to stand, step down from your duties and never come back up here again.